I'm delighted to announce that WHO has the honor of working with Kim Sledge of the legendary group Sister Sledge and Natasha Mudhar, founder of the World We Want organization. Together, we're ready. This was uh, thank very you. interesting. So thank you very much. Uh, and I hope, uh, Kim, you enjoyed our, our um, version and look forward to uh, hearing you on November, November 9. Thank you so much for your partnership again. And uh, to the rest, I mean, to those who, have, who had a chance to uh, uh, follow our conversation, I would, like, I would like you to join us, uh, Kim, uh, Kim Sledge, and Natasha in the new We Are Family campaign. Uh, now moving into the next. On Friday, we discussed the worrying phase that COVID-19 pandemic has entered. At the Northern Hemisphere enters winter, we are seeing cases accelerate, particularly in Europe and North America. It's encouraging to see many leaders communicating with their populations about targeted measures that are needed to slow down the spread of the virus and protect health workers and health systems. As cases go up, the number of people needing beds in hospitals and intensive care also increases. Nurses and doctors have a much better understanding of how best to treat people with the virus than they did in the early days of the pandemic. However, when hospital capacity is reached and exceeded, it's a very difficult and dangerous situation for both patients and health workers alike. So it's important that all governments focus on the fundamentals that help to break the chains of transmission and save both lives and livelihoods. This means active case finding, cluster investigations, isolating all cases, quarantining contacts, ensuring good clinical care, supporting and protecting health workers, and protecting the vulnerable. We're in this for the long haul, but there is hope that if we make smart choices together, we can keep cases down ensure essential health services continue, and children can still go to school. We all have a part to play. Physical distancing, mask wearing, hand hygiene, coughing safely into your arm, avoiding crowds, and meeting people outside where possible, and when you have to be inside with others, open windows and ensure good ventilation with none recirculating air. I know there is a fatigue, but the virus has shown that when we let our guard down, it can surge back at breakneck speed and threaten hospitals and health systems. On 9 October, I shared that 171 countries and economies were part of the Gavi, CEPI, and WHO-led COVAX initiative for vaccine access. I'm pleased to announce today that now 184 countries have now joined COVAX. The most recent countries joining over the weekend are Ecuador and Uruguay. COVAX represents the largest portfolio of potential COVID-19 vaccines and the most effective way to share safe and effective vaccines equitably across the world. Equitably sharing vaccines is the fastest way to safeguard high-risk communities stabilize health systems, and drive a truly global economic recovery. As winter comes, we know that the next few months will be tough. But by working together today and sharing life-saving health supplies globally, including personal protective equipment, supplies of oxygen, dexamethasone, and vaccines when they are proven to be safe and effective, we can save lives and get through this pandemic. As Kim said, we are one big global family. I thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Tidros. Um, just to inform you that this press conference is being translated uh, into the official UN lang languages, um, Arabic, Chinese, French, English, Spanish, but I apologize today we do not have Russian translation, but we have Portuguese and Hindi. Uh, now I will open the floor to questions from journalists. I remind you that you need to raise your hand use the raise your hand function in order to get in the queue to ask your question. Um, uh, uh, as we've said